Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Kathy, and this is August 13th, and I'm just noticing I'm at a friend's house. I'm just noticing how my head's going to have this little aura around it occasionally. I'm, my head's right in front of a clock, <laughs> but I'm puppy sitting. So if you hear puppies that start barking or demanding to be in my lap or something, we're just going to ignore them as much as we can. But they do have a tendency to bite my toes, literally. So <laughs> this is going to be this is going to be fun. Uh, I'm delighted that everybody is here, and I am delighted to be with you today. For those who listen to this later, we are, it's what, been not quite a week since there has been that horrible fire in Maui, and I was just looking at the news and it, or at the thing, and there's 93 people have found, been found dead. So part of what we're going to do today is to wrap all of those who have left their bodies in in love and requesting, which I've been doing, requesting for angelic realms to come and escort them home so that people aren't stuck. And uh, of course, I don't know how, I mean, that island, probably all of the islands are just in absolute agony with what has happened and it happened so quickly. So we will, for those who are here for the first time or watching the first time, is that we will begin with developing the heart source and doing our own protection, which includes Michael's sword and the violet flame. And we'll develop the healing lecture room. And these are all things that you can practice on doing yourself, which would be a big assistance to you. And then we will have a healing circle. And then we will have a message from someone. I mean, I'm sensing this energy coming in and it's not Ama. And I think they actually want to talk about what happens since we brought, since I brought up Maui, they actually want to talk about what happens to people when there is sudden death, unexpected death, which is, will be an interesting thing today, won't it be? Okay, so let us move into our heart source and just say heart source. And for those of you who aren't familiar with it, bring your attention to the front of your heart chakra and go deep within. And now bring your attention to the back of your heart chakra, going deep within. Go even deeper. Somebody's a little bit too low and to the left. Just kind of move more along your spine and up. There you go. And now let's move to the front of the third eye. And again, go deep within. If you go real deep in there, um, in the back, kind of near the pranic tube, is the violet flame that we call to activate. And now around to the back of the third eye. Again, going deep within. So you're actually quad located, not bilocated, but quad located in, in four different ways, four different places, dimensions. Each one is a different dimension or a different experience. Now intend or draw or form a beam of energy from your heart chakra to your third eye. Feel the connection there. And now move that straight up to the center of the universe. It knows right where to go. And now straight down into the center of the earth. It's always easier to kind of figure out where the center of the earth is, isn't it? Since you're on the earth and you wonder where in the universe is the center of the universe. Good. This is your heart source. And I'm going to expand the heart source first before we do the other steps. Sometimes I do it the other way. Just ask or command heart source, expand either to the seventh layer of my aura or when holding your arms out all the way to the tips of my fingers, whichever is larger. For some of you, it's going to be the aura, and some of you, it'll be just to the tips of your fingers. Some people's aura expands 
as we and as we get going, yours will expand. Some expand into the next room. Some people's are when you're doing healing work can actually expand over a whole block. Isn't that amazing? Over a whole block. Good. Now command. Chakra spin. Spin as fast as is safe for me. Breathe in deeply, bringing in energy from above and from below. There you go. And just say chakra spin. What you're doing is you're allowing the spinning of the chakras to, like a centrifugal force, is to spin out congestion that is there. Let's add a little something, something I don't usually add. Healing team. Please remove any and all artificial encodements that are inhibiting the cleansing of my chakras. And I felt a real difference. I might have to start adding that. I felt a real difference. See if you feel a difference in cleansing. And now let's ask healing team. It's actually the encodement team and the healing team. Please Repair any damaged or altered natural encodements which are interfering with the clearing of my chakras. There you go. Good. Now state, I am the sword in this activates those of you who have received Michael the Archangel's sword. It activates you as being the sword. And those of you who have not received Archangel Michael's sword, just call him, ask him to come to you and stand next to you. And now extend your dominant hand palm up and ask him if you may have his sword. And he will put the hilt of his sword in your hand. I always feel it when he does that. And just grasp the sword and then hold it up in front of you. You can always thank him for it, by the way. And then place the sword within your heart. Feel the energy go throughout your body. And now anytime you say, I am the sword, and I mean anytime, the energy of the sword engulfs you. And the sword of Michael can be microns long when you're working with something very, very tiny, like an atom, or it can be miles long when you are working on a star in another galaxy. I guess that would be light years long, wouldn't it? Good, and now one more to really strengthen your energy field violet flame activate 360 degrees all around the seventh layer of my aura and it will activate notice any difference those of you who don't notice the differences at first you begin very subtly it's not a well at least for me it isn't at the beginning this huge difference it's like a subtle a very subtle difference. And as you pay more attention to it and become aware of it, you will be able to experience the energy more. You know, and this just popped into my head, which means somebody put it in there, is that if you have ever touched a plant or a tree and asked to feel its energy, if you've never done that before and you're not real sensitive to the energy it takes a while you notice what your body feels like your energy feels like and then just place your hand on the tree and ask for its energy and notice any differences and if you have a tendency to say i don't know if i'm making this up then you're feeling the changes you're feeling the changes okay 
just relax. Your chakras are gonna go back to where they are going to be for this session. And here's something when we're gonna do the healing and the channeling, especially when the channeling is you, or even if you just pick up a book or you're listening to a lecture, just say healing team, please align my encodement system so that I may understand, hear, see, experience, whatever the energies are. So align my encodement system to the vibration of the energy that is needed. There you go. I can feel little changes in me. I guess that means whatever I'm gonna be listening or speaking about. And now we are creating our healing lecture room. And I got this from the Melchizedek method. And there is a, all of us are in here. Everyone who ever listens to this, that doesn't matter when you listen to it. You are here within this healing session. You are here in this lecture room. And there is a floor below all of us. There's a canopy above all of us. There are pillars of light in the four corners. And there are members of the angelic realm that go from pillar to pillar to pillar to pillar to pillar, to pillar all the way around. And there are many different bands of angels I am seeing members of the angelic realm from Archangel Raphael's band, the healing, from Archangel Michael's, the protector and the defender of truth with a capital T, Gabriel's band, who are proclaimers of truth and help us in the proclamation that we have for truth. There are golden angels from Archangel Golden's work who works with the higher levels of the rays and also works with encodements and uh, metatron has stepped in if you're not familiar with metatron he is uh, one of the archangels that has a tremendous amount of responsibility just get a sense of them all there and now there is a central pillar. And in the central pillar are coming many, many people from other dimensions. And you may experience or know of different ones than what I know, because we each have our own way of connecting. And I, it's always, I, well, I can't think of a time it hasn't been, but for me, it's always been Buddha and Yeshua walking in together, chatting and having a good time. and acknowledging and waving at people. And if you're not familiar with the term Yeshua, that is the Aramaic for Jesus. So Jesus is the anglicized version. And following them are Mother Mary and Kuan Yin and White Buffalo Catwoman. There is Athena there. There is Kali from the Hindu tradition. There is, um, I don't know her name, but somebody beautiful that's uh, from Africa. She's telling me she's from a place which is now called Nigeria. Somebody from Egypt. A lot of the feminine energies are coming in right now. And now are coming in some of the masculine energies that are coming in. So we're seeing Dwakul, we're seeing um, Hilarion. Who else are we seeing? Lord Lanto, Kathumi. Many, many that are all coming in. Isn't it wonderful that they all come to join us? These multidimensional beings. And now we're going to have the pleasure of having the golden Elohim come in and lead us in some healing. Now, the golden Elohim is the one who gave me the information for the book, The Creation of Form. And I'm going to be, I was told I'm going to be working with him because I, it is time for me to, to work with Ama and to get Amma's information out worldwide. And that's, that's a big task. 
And I said, I'll need help. And Alma said, I'm going to send you someone to help you. And it's the golden Elohim that are going to be, that's going to be helping me with that. And the golden Elohim is going to work with healing for us. It's going to show us some things or take us through a healing thing. And he is inviting all of you. He turned to Hilarion, who is the Chohan, the head of the fifth ray, the ray of healing. And Hilarion has fixed for each one of you who are here live and who are listening a well, it's interesting. It's not the green chair of healing. It is a golden chair of healing. And he's following the golden Elohim's directions. And he's preparing that now. And he's preparing it specifically for you, each one of you. It is made to your vibration and it is going to be filled with vibrational energies that are suited for you and where you are now and what is in the deepest of your heart and a need for healing. And these chairs, by the way, are in a circle. It's a different type of healing circle that they're doing this time. And it's a closed circle. You know, it's like it's there. Anybody can get through that wants to. It's closed not to keep people out but just so that you are connected one to another. And now, in the center of the circle is invited all the people that you want to pray for. And I forgot to get that list before we started. So if anybody wants to unmute, you don't have to unmute. But if anybody wants to unmute, you may unmute and put in your intentions. So I'm just going to mention some people. I'm not going to mention them by name, but some people who are struggling with different illnesses I have. Uh, I'll mention some of them by name, but there's some that re wish to remain more or less anonymous, but recovering from surgery, several people with eye problems. Um, the two Joes that, I, that we put in the healing circle who are have cancer, so for them and for all of their family members who are struggling with them also. My brother, Tom, who has terminal cancer. Um, Meredith, many of you know Meredith. Her father died. And so putting that within the circle. People with muscular skeletal disorders, and that's arthritis. And some of them I'm getting to work with autoimmune disorders also. Anything that you're placing in the circle. And we now invite them on the soul level to come into the center of the circle with us. We're going to do this healing first, and then we're going to do some work with uh, um, all of those beautiful people who have perished in the fires in Maui. So first, so what I'm getting is behind you, actually around you, behind you is your healing team, and they are focusing energy coming in from the back of your heart chakra and the top of your crown. Of course, the crown only has a top, right? Top of your crown. And the energy is coming through you. And it is being finely attuned to the healing that you as an individual would like to have. And I'll tell you what I'm getting as I'm doing that. One of the things that's being unleashed in you are is the vibration of energy needed to remove blocks to joy. To remove blocks to joy. Well, this is an interesting one. Many times we identify ourselves by our pain. 
we may identify ourselves as someone who has an autoimmune disorder, someone who was born with some type of infirmity, someone who is um, sexually abused or uh, somebody with PTSD. We identify ourselves in that. And if you are ready, ask for the disillusion of that identity because that is not who you are. You are, remember who you are? You are love incarnate. You are the power and presence of God. That is who you are. And just ask if you're ready for it, because it changes things when you identify yourself by something that happened to you. And then you have always identified yourself by that. And suddenly you're not that anymore. It's like, well, who am I? Well, you're love incarnate. But I don't know what that means. Time to find out, right? And just allow that energy to come in through you. You can even form an image of it passing through your body and dissolving the entire structure of I was abused. I am, I am sick. My family didn't want me. All of those things. See, whatever it is. Say, I now call for the dissolution of all the energies, all the encodements, all the structures that have me identifying myself as anything other than love incarnate and the power and presence of God. Just allow that to go through you now. You find there's a part of you that kind of says, and it's usually like a child part that says, no, I, that's, this is true about me. Say, not anymore, sweetie. It is not true about you. I know it happened, but it is not who you are. And if it is a little child part of you that happens, just take him or her in your arms and say, it's okay. We're different now. It's time to grow up into the adult that is truly loving. And now. As that has happened, not if you can still hear me over the barking dogs. Okay. So now that that has happened, all of the people in the center of the circle, that energy is now coming through you and coming out your heart to them. And ask for that energy to be of the exact vibration needed for those within the circle. So just feel that energy coming right through you. And of course, you may be saying any prayer that you wish while this is happening. And Amma and Abba, we thank you for using us to bring healing both to ourselves and to others.
And now, Amen Abba, we ask you to assist us as we assist any of your beloveds who, whose body died in that fire in Maui. We ask you to surround them totally and completely. We ask you to surround them with this energy of love that is so strong that they recognize their angels, their guides, their healing teams, they're with them. And they reach out to go home. We ask you to dissolve any fear they had, any anguish they had. We ask you if there are any there who do not know that their bodies have died, we ask that that be revealed to them in such a way that they understand it and they recognize that it is time for them to leave this planet. We ask you to assist in detaching any energies from them that are holding them here, especially the grief of their families, the anger of their families. And of course, that this would involve all of the islands in Hawaii. And we ourselves in this healing ceremony just call out to them and say, it is time to go home. It is time to go home. Thank you for the gift of your lives. And for those who maybe are reluctant to go because they don't want to leave their loved ones, they want to minister to them, is you can still be there and support with your loved ones, but it will help them more if you go home first and follow the process that happens after death. Death of the physical body. The love that you shared and the love they shared with you, your loved ones that are still here, will always be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Amanaba. And we also ask for the healing of those who have been injured in the fires. The exact vibration of love needed for them that they heal. And we ask for the exact vibration of love needed for for the first responders, for the families to heal from the emotional trauma of this. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of this, for us to assist these wonderful beings. And so it is. So now comes our message. This is really interesting. It is the collective energy of thus, those of us who are here at this ceremony or who will be listening later, it's the collective energy of our soul selves. 
or you could say, as Ama uses soul cells, other people say higher selves. You know, when I have channeled, like the golden Elohim is not one being, it's many beings. Amiya, who channeled, who gave me all the information for the other books that are out other than the creation of form, is a collection of beings. Those of you who have heard of Abraham, um, that is also a collection of beings. And we are now going to have the collection of beings of our soul selves. Anybody who listens to this who's here now, this is all of our soul selves, all of our higher selves, if you prefer that term, coming together to give this message. Now, it's interesting. We have uh, it was a few weeks ago that Mother Mary came and talked to us about the pain of life. We've had people come and talk to us about following the will of God and really kind of going into what is our purpose in life, which is very simply to explore love in its many facets. I'm not real sure what our collective soul selves are going to say but i'm willing to give it a try and see what's there so i ask you to each send a beam of energy from your heart to the central pillar and to please send a beam of energy to my heart to give me assistance and ama and abba i ask you since i've not ever channeled this collective before and it's so personal because it's us here I ask you to open my mind and my heart and to let go of anything that I try to make it to be and let me just take it how it is now. We are here. We are here, which means you are here because we are the collective energy and each one of us individually is the collective energy of from which you and this incarnation sprang. Each one of us, your specific soul self is here. And what is in the individual soul self? Your individual soul self contains all of the wisdom and knowledge that you have acquired from the time that you separated from the oneness, from that spark of light that volunteered and said, yes, yes. I will be one who participates in assisting the creator of all to learn more about what the creator is, which is love. And your soul self contains all the wisdom and all the knowledge that you have ever learned from the time that you first left that spark from your first incarnation as a one-celled being. Maybe you were a bacterium or a virus or an algae. Isn't that amazing to think that you started just as a one-celled being? Why did you start as a one-celled being? Because you needed to Get used to what it was like to be, in a sense, separate from the love. And we did it a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. One-celled beings don't live very long, do they? Maybe some days. There are some in your body that live maybe seven years. And why have we come to you as a collection? Because as a collection, you have 
so much more wisdom and knowledge you can tap into. The soul selves, the higher selves have their own energy. You learn from each other and you learn from each other in your physicality, in your incarnation. And you learn from each other in sharing wisdom and knowledge and questions. You learn from questions. Sharing that with each other. You have more wisdom than you could ever know. You have access to even more than what you could ever know. When you go into your heart as a physical being, you experience what is it, what it is like to have a portal to wisdom and understanding. Think about that. When you are in your heart source, you have a portal to the wisdom and knowledge of the universes, to the galaxies, not just one, to all planets, to all beings. Because your soul self is one of the collection of soul selves within within the oceans of love. The difference is that your oceans of love are infinite. Infinite wherever it is that you are and wherever it is that you go. Different ones have been giving you messages about what pain is like. Why it is that you have tough times in your incarnations, what the purpose of that is. This collection of us is the result of that purpose of being love and examining love in different ways. You've examined what love is and you've examined what happens when love is not. In other words, the light and the shadow of this energy called love, the light and the shadow of this emotion, which is different than the energy called love. Joy is a beautiful place to be, is it not? In your incarnation, you do not always learn from joy. You are affirmed in joy. You are affirmed that you are loved because you were created with joy. Therefore, it is part of the love that you are. Joy is different than happiness, right? You do not have happiness when you leave your body. Because that is a human construct. You have joy when you go home. It is not happiness. That is transient. It is joy, which is who you are. Because joy is inherent in the energy of love. Those of you who have been walking this path for some time, for decades even, have heard other channels talk about how things are going to be difficult, that there will be people leaving the planet in unusual and strange ways. When you think of Hawaii, did you ever think so many people would leave at once from a fire? From a fire on an island that does not have volcanoes? If you know your history, you know of those that left 
all at once, just before World War II began for the United States, with the bombing of Pearl Harbor. But other than that, and then what has happened this week, Hawaii has an idea of paradise, does it not? And then this fire invaded. Think about your own lives. You may have felt at some point that you were living in the paradise of your lives, whether it was with your children or your grandchildren, or whether that paradise of your lives was in feeling that you were on your path and feeling so good about what was happening. And then a fire came, whatever that fire may be, the metaphor of the fire. Fire is destructive and fire is purifying. You are experiencing in your own countries difficulties. There is a fire in these countries, in the metaphor of the fire. of which you are to pay attention to as people of light. Because this is why you are here. People of light, to shine that light. And when that light shines, it is like a bonfire. Not a bonfire of destruction but a bonfire of cleansing. It is important for you. Our creations, you are our creations. You are the one that we planned on being here. You are an incarnation from ourself, and we planned your life, which means you. I know sometimes you think, how could I have planned this? You planned what you were going to learn. We planned what you would learn. And it was time to learn how to love through tremendous difficulties and pain, because it is time to wipe clean from this planet, all that is not love. It is time to wipe clean the separation from people due to race or creed or sexual orientation. It is time to wipe away the perceived difference depending upon social economic values. It is time to recognize and to live that there is neither, though some of you may recognize this, Jew nor Greek, slaved or free, male or female. It is time to remember that you are one with each other. And you are the way showers of this oneness. You are the one who has been called because you have learned, you have answered the call. That in all things give thanks and gratitude. Even the horror. <coughs> Even, excuse me. Even the horror that you have heard about and experienced, not only in Maui, but in the Ukraine, in your cities, in Ecuador, in Gaza, all of these places. You are called to recognize that there is no real death. Yes, there is in the physical sense. 
but that the people who have left their bodies, there was a reason that they chose to leave now. It is not a reason that anybody would understand right now. But that reason has to do with them giving support, recognizing what life truly is, and now giving support to everyone who has left. Many of you have recently lost loved ones. I'm going to say recently being in the last few years. And the pain is great for you. There is no pain for them. And they are with you. It is a group energy that is with you that you are to join with. They assist you in amplifying your light. They assist you in letting the fire of love to blossom from your heart, to bring cleansing to you and to others. They assist you, if you accept that assistance, to stay within your heart source. There are many of you who are going through painful times now, some of it from loss, some from watching loved ones suffer, some from illness. And what are you to do during this time? You are to do one of the most difficult things that humans have to do when they're in such pain is to be in your heart and to give thanks for whatever is happening and to turn yourself over to the purpose that you do not know of why this is happening. You do not know what your joyful acceptance of what you are going through witnesses to other people who watch. It could be someone that you know dearly, or it could be a caretaker, or it could be someone that you see on the street that becomes aware of who you are. People who are watching what happens in Maui, their heart hurts. They see this pain and it softens their heart and they can feel compassion. Yes, of course, you have those who are the naysayers who blame people for living there, whether the fires are in Maui or in California or in Canada or in Europe, that blaming the victim. Why do they do that? Because they are in fear. And you pray for their fear to be lost to be dissolved. Know this. No matter what happens to you, no matter what happens to your loved ones and the feelings that you experience, you are not alone. You are not alone. Just in case you didn't hear that. You are not alone. There are those who are with you, who have their hands upon your shoulder, whose heart is sending energy to your heart. This time, this time you are in and have been in for some time, is a proving ground for you. It is the molding you into love and to the acceptance of who it is you are as love and how do you know you are loved because you love when things are difficult, because you rejoice that people are learning from you even if you do not 
know that they are. There are going to be many more people who you will hear about who are in pain. There are still storms going to come this summer. People have a choice to make. They have a choice to make when they hear about other people's pain. They have a choice to make when they have their own pain. They have the choice to make when they hear about things that are done to people because of their race or their gender or their sexual orientation or their socioeconomic status. And you have a choice to make. And that choice is to love or to walk away from love. These are tough words, are they not? We, your soul selves, are calling you to be who it is that you were created to be, which is the power and presence of God. It is to love. And it is the decisions you make now and until your life on this incarnation ends to make now of how you were going to look at everything around you. Can you be from your heart in a place of gratitude that the creator's plan is unfolding? And sometimes it's just hard to believe it is unfolding, isn't it? How could this plan be the creator's? Well, know first of all, that the creator has only meant joy for you only meant joy for humanity it was humanity that made the other decision and you are here to renew that commitment to joy and to be a person who stands there as Amma says as the eye of the storm recognize that you are love and no matter what anybody has told you like the healing that just occurred for you how you have identified yourself in the negative that has been dissolved now accept it don't recreate the structure accept how beloved you are and not only are you beloved but you as a beloved have come to show others they are beloved. It is not something you do by preaching. It is something you do by being. I think we have said enough. You have heard this message. And it is another call from us who had you spring from our energy of love, which of course sprang from the energy of the love itself. We have come to tell you what our intention was when we created your life as it is now. When we set the plan for what you would learn, what you would feel, what you would experience. Yes, even the pain that you had, the challenges you had. Our intention was that gold is cleansed in fire as above, so below. Gold is cleansed in the fire, and you are the most precious gold that can be. We, your soul selves, love you more than you could ever imagine because you are aspects of love. You are aspects of ourselves. And each one of us now individually is hugging you and congratulating you 
and telling you, you are doing a wonderful job. And you say, oh, but I do this and I do this. Yes, you are doing a wonderful job and you know how you can improve. And the biggest thing you can do to improve is to accept that you are loved and you are loved. Our love to you as we continue to hug you. Well, this is Kathy, and that was not in any way, shape, or form anything that I expected. <laughs> Beautiful words, Dr. Kathy. Beautiful words. Thank you. It was Thank kind you. Of effective. What was it like to hear them say that? Yes. So moving. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, I hope Beautiful. Thank you, Santi. I hope the dogs weren't too disturbing. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. They probably feel the energy, too. <laughs> they did, and chewing on my toe got a little bit difficult. <laughs> and that one, that was a peanut that wanted to climb into my lap. Aww. So that was, that was good. I thank, thank you all very much. And thank you. Thank let you. us keep in our mind this week to hold each other in prayer every day. Yeah. Yes. Send mm -hmm. love every day. Yes. 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 Blessings to you and my love to you. Yes. Many Thank blessings. Thank you. And our love to you too. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Karen. Mm -hmm.